Hello and welcome to One Shot Productions, the show where we know if we're going to talk about movies, TV shows, or video games on the internet, we only got one shot. Joining me today is Kiki. Hello. And Dave. Hey. Now, folks, we all know what's going on right now. Apparently, I'm banned from saying it on YouTube, but you all know what's going down. We're all quarantined at this point. So it got me thinking. As someone who's suffered from major depression where I couldn't leave my house regularly, I got a few movies and TV shows that I can recommend to people who are stuck at home and don't know what to do. And that's what we're going to talk about. Movies, TV shows, and video games that are great for a binge watch. So, just so you're all aware, the way this is going to work is we're going to talk about a movie series, a TV series, an underappreciated gem of a movie, and a video game. Let's not waste any time and dive in. The first series that we're going to talk about is The Evil Dead. Now, if you know my taste in comedy and horror, you know I like the dark comedies. You know I like the gross-out humor. And this has it all in spades. First off, Bruce Campbell. If you don't like Bruce Campbell, we are going to report you to the FBI because you're clearly an alien. But there's so much to love in this series between the practical effects, the genuine scares with some great design monsters, hilarious dialogue. Between the three movies of the original series and the TV show that followed, it's a Blast to watch beginning to end. I will also briefly mention that the rebooted film, while not sticking to the same tones as the series, it's more of a straight-up horror film, is also pretty decent watch. Do either of you have any thoughts on The Evil Dead? I've only seen the first one of the original, and it was really good. It was everything I was hoping it would be. And I also agree the remake is excellent as its own. It's been a while since I've seen them, but I do remember liking what I saw, and... I can. I think the remake was probably in the among the better of the remake batch of the late two thousands, early twenty tens. Oh, I totally agree with that. Yeah. Honestly, I think anyone who had an issue with it was just expecting more of the Evil Dead tone, and this one just went for a straight up horror film. So if it uh, had been wasn't called, the original that like. Well, yes and no. They kind of realized like halfway through that they were adding a bit more comedic moments. Like, for example, there's a scene in the original where a pipe breaks and it just drenches ash with blood. And it's in a very comedic Three Stooges sort of way. And from what I remember, like, reading about the production, wasn't that, like, even though I guess the cast enjoyed the movie, like, at least for the first one, wasn't the making of kind of miserable? Yeah, that's been my understanding of it, simply because they were, they weren't a professional Hollywood crew, they were just a bunch of kids trying to make a movie real quick. Well, if that's everyone's thoughts on The Evil Dead, we'll move on to Kiki's pick. So my pick, if if anyone's known me for any amount of time, they more than likely know that Lord of the Rings trilogy is, uh, like, just insert chef kiss here, it's perfect. Um... <laughs> They they did pretty good with the amount of material they had in the books to go off of, and I think they got a bunch of key points. There was definitely, you know, missing stuff that would have been nice to have, but then we would have had, instead of, what, nine hours, ten hours of movie, we would have had days. <laughs> Which, to be fair, if you watch the special edition, you almost do to begin with. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I'll just say... This was my original pick for this category, but I knew Kiki was going to say it, so I just was like, okay, I'm going to pick something different. <laughs> I love these movies. I actually think in some ways they approve upon the original books because there's much more a sense of urgency in the movies. Whereas well, the books do get that sense after a while, but it takes a bit. Yeah, Jay, Jay Earl, he really uh, put a ton of detail into this book. Mm-hmm. I won't into all of his books, really. Um, I think The Hobbit was like a breather for him. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, and I'm not knocking the books at all. I love the no. books. I'm just saying for a more modern <laughs> audience, I think. 
that's probably what's going to be more enjoyable, you know? Okay. I have a confession. Never watched a minute of these. <gasps> <laughs> these things happen. <laughs> and actually, to be honest, like, even though it's not like an obvious, like, reference point like Star Wars, like, Lord of the Rings just, it's kind of been tainted by me just because of one asshole I knew is just such a huge fan of it that I was avoiding it out of spite. Okay. Yeah, I, feel, yeah. I, I can relate to that for sure. Mm-hmm. Definitely can't hold you that against you. <laughs> yeah. All right, Dave, what's your pick? I gave it some thought, and I have to say, like, out of all the franchises that one could binge, I really think there's potential for it's the Chucky movies. I mean, over the course of the seven originals plus the remake, they managed to change tones multiple times, yet have it still work. And the fact they always had Brad Dura as Chucky and always had the same writer across the original series, especially like maybe 10 years or so ago, like Chucky wasn't considered one of the biggest icons, like compared to Freddy, Jason, or Michael. But I think his franchise holds up the best, perhaps. Yeah, I'll actually agree with you there because, like, the Freddies and the Jasons, like, they just kept pumping them out regardless of quality. With the Child's Play and later Chucky movies, you could tell this was someone's passion project through and through. And technically, if you check the release years from Child's Play 3 to Cult of Chucky, we averaged one Chucky movie every presidency. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, I believe it's The Curse of Chucky. Is that the one that came out before Cult of Chucky? Yeah, Curse was six. We we were we did a podcast on that one years ago. Oh, yeah, way back in the day. I would actually argue that's probably the best out of the entire series. Don't get me wrong, the original is great and everything, but I think you can make an argument that the way that film was shot and paced and the way it kind of managed to balance both the tones of the Bride of Chucky and the original Child's Play series. It just nailed it. Did you see Cult yet, by the way? It's... I actually was going to watch it on Netflix right after this. <laughs> okay, so you better, like, give me your running thoughts as you watch it. Oh, for sure. And also, much to my surprise, the remake from last year... I'd also say it is one of the better ones. It's not even so much how... they. I mean, they did a completely different approach, but they got writer and filmmakers who clearly gave a shit about what they were making. Oh, good. And, like, I thought, okay, since I knew Brad Dourif wasn't going to be Chucky again, like, I didn't think there'd be anybody who they could get that would sound appealing, but then they'd go and pull Mark Hamill. Which, can we talk about Mark Hamill's underrated voice acting career like oh, the vast yeah. majority just know him as luke skywalker guy but well to be honest just... like what other live action things did he do besides star wars i honestly can't think of any uh he was in a movie called cadillac summer or something and a lot of bit roles he was pretty quickly typecast as and like luke if anything i associate him as a voice actor more than i do a live action performer oh i totally get that He's definitely had, outside of Star Wars, more success in that type of filmmaking. And if I had to pick which of the Chuggies is my favorite, uh, I, by a close margin, and this is actually somewhat of a controversial choice, I'd, I'd like Child's Play 3 the most. Oh, really? Is that the military camp one? Yep. Yeah. I mean, sure, it was rushed as crazy. It came out only nine months after Child's Play 2. But one thing I can appreciate is how, in this series, each installment is distinct. It never feels like they're recycling the same premise twice. And, mm -hmm. and considering it was the same writer, he was willing to get experimental. Not to mention, I think there's a TV show series coming out soon, yep, isn't there? in the original series and continuity, but and the, the production on that's probably going to be pushed back a few months. Yeah, well, I think everything's getting pushed back a few months right now. Mm -hmm. I've never seen them. I, I saw like a split second of one one time flipping two channels as a kid, and that's all I got for Ch Chucky. Well, I have 
two thoughts I want to just throw in real quick. First, in the first movie especially, I love the design of the Chucky doll. <laughs> a lot of problems I have with newer killer dolls like uh, Annabelle, I think's the name of that series. Yeah. They're so obviously supposed to look evil. Mm -hmm. Well, in this original one, it's a doll. He's a little uncanny valley, sure, but he looks like a doll you would actually get your kids. And actually, one thing I never noticed about the original specifically until, like, some facts video pointed out was something the first one did that none of the sequels really followed up on is that when he was gradually becoming more human, his face, like, started to just resemble Brad Dourif's more. Yeah, that is an amazing detail they put in that most people won't notice and i don't hate on cgi like most people but i do think sometimes because it's easier to do than a practical effect some of these ideas and whatnot don't get brought forward and the other thing i'll say is about the remake is it has audrey plaza in it and it's audrey plaza i will watch basically anything she's in i don't know that i'll have to do that and i another bit of trivia i like is that the actress who played the mom in the original ended up marrying, like, the guy who operated the Chucky puppet. Oh, nice. And so, like, even though she wasn't in the second movie, she was actually on set, technically. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Makes you wonder why they didn't just bring her back as well. Uh, probably a contract thing. Probably. And the cop in the original was uh, Jack Skellington. Oh my gosh, really? Yeah. Yeah, Chris Sarandon. Huh. That's cool. The more you know. <laughs> All right, folks. Well, that wraps up the movie series to binge. So we're going to move on to TV shows to binge. Hi, folks. Clancy here. Just hopping on to say, uh, due to the length of the video, this rough cut ended up being about an hour long. We actually decided to separate it into four halves so this is part one and we did this mostly for the youtubes the twitters the instagrams nobody wants to sit through an hour video we will be uploading the full length video here on soundcloud and youtube and also facebook but for now this is just part one of four so stay tuned <laughs> first and the first that's why we have editing <laughs>